Good evening. Welcome to Friday night, Saturday morning, which this week has a transatlantic flavor in that one of our guests is American, author Helene Hunt. Another is a British star currently making an astonishing impact on Broadway, David Bowie. Another lot, the Hollies, have just recorded an album of songs made famous by one of America's legendary performers, Buddy Holly. And another guest author, Christopher Matthew and I, have both stayed at the Plaza Hotel New York. Not together, I hasten to add. When I was in New York recently, I did not stay at the Plaza, but did manage to totter down to Broadway's Booth Theatre, where rock star David Bowie's career has taken yet another astonishing turn. He's taken over the lead in one of last season's Broadway hits, The Elephant Man, a straight, legitimate play. Should we start the show? <laughs> well, we have done. We've already started. Thank you for joining us. Yes. <laughs> the following day, I had a long talk with Mr. Bowie, far removed from his ziggy stardust persona, which we'll be showing later. But right now... <laughs> Hollies and Heartbeat, great record. And now Bowie in New York. The play in which rock star David Bowie has scored a remarkable triumph on Broadway is called The Elephant Man. It's a story set in late 19th century England of John Merrick, played by Bowie, a grotesquely deformed man who suffered a miserable existence as a pathetic circus attraction until he was befriended by a brilliant young surgeon. Also closely involved with John Merrick's re rehabilitation was the beautiful English actress Mrs. Kendall, superbly played by Patricia Elliott. Confusingly, a film about John Merrick starring John Hurt has just been released, but apart from the subject matter, the two projects, that's the play and the film, are unrelated. Bowie's first appearance as a straight actor met with almost universal praise from the New York critics, and I know to my cost that they can be slightly unpleasant at times, and there are long lines at the box office. In the first extract you're going to see, the doctor, Frederick Treves, played by Donald Donnelly, is trying to convince the elephant man that he really has a home for the first time in his life. I like David Bowie in it. I, you can see the sensitivity behind him in the play, carrying it across differently. It's good to see him in a different role, other than just music. He brings a vulnerability that I didn't see in the previous actor. You know, it, it comes across in his body and also his face. His terrific delivery, too. It's amazing. It's the side of him I wasn't acquainted with, and uh, I'm impressed. And visual eyes what this man really looked like, and it's an exceptional performance. I mean, he's wonderful. I love him. Well, here we are, in fact, in the wonderful warm suite of the Carlisle Hotel. They're all warm, but this is one of the warmest. And thank you for sparing a bit of your time. Last night I saw you on Broadway, the first time I've seen you legitimately acting, or acting legitimate, as they call it here. Why have you done it? Obvious question. But uh, perfunctory answer because somebody asked me if I would. And was uh, it the play that attracted you or the idea of... Not really. I saw the play. Uh, I missed it when it was in London at the Hampstead. Um, but then Philip Anglin brought it over to New York and started it there. And I missed it off-Broadway as well. I always wanted to go and see it when I'd heard about it because I'd, there was a book by Frank Edwards called Strange People which came out when I was a teenager which had all kinds of things like the the uh, the the poor, poor blowtorch, who was a, a young black guy who walked into a Chicago hospital and said that he couldn't lie down on the sheets because they used to burst into flame, and he lay down on the bed and promptly set the pillow on fire. And they held him for 24 hours, but then he sort of ran away in terror, and nobody ever knew what happened to him. It was full of those kinds of stories, and one of them yeah. was John Merrick, the elephant man. And that appealed to me ever since then, it's because of my... I have a sort of eclectic thing about freaks and isolationists and alienated people sort of and I kind of gather information on people like that mentally anyway then it became a play and uh, I of course so I, that sort of rekindled my interest in it I went to see it on Broadway when it had already got sort of smartened up and become a Broadway piece um, and I was uh, totally um, knocked out by it I thought it was it's sort of a classic piece of Victorian melodramatic writing uh, with a slight socialist subtext um, but it appealed to me strongly I thought the structure was very good but thought no more and then uh, Jack Hofsis the director came to see me a couple of months later whilst I was back in New York yet again doing the Scary Monsters album and asked me if I would consider taking over the role at the end of the year and I was flabbergasted because I had never been asked to do anything that sort of supposedly legit and I said I would adore to and you began out of town. In yeah, we Denver. began. To, they sort of played safe and put me somewhere so I could die a quiet death. Right. <laughs> De uh, Denver. And we did a week there, and then we did three weeks in Chicago. And then they felt that I was right for the big time. Right. 
Well, in fact, you didn't die a death. It Big was time. Death. Brian Ferry impersonation. You get everything on this show. <laughs> in actual fact, all went very well. The critics Hello, gave Brian. you a very kind reception. Yeah. Do, you, do, yeah. do after all the years of, of, of having had a pretty good run in the rock world, which is obviously still continuing, um, do you, in fact, find getting praise from well, different sources? Well, it was a sources. limp rather than a run. <laughs> Uh, awkward at best, but... But please. you must be almost blasé about praise from rock papers, or at least the intelligent ones. Um, are you, in fact, much more thrilled by the audience response at Broadway? Is it, is it a totally new excitement for you? Praise I mean, I mean, from rock papers has never been a gift given unto me. But, or, or indeed um, to anybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or indeed. It's, uh, no, some have been well, say the audience. very I mean, I mean, there was yeah, a, li there listen, was a yes, great quite ovation. So. I've had a, t a terrific uh, audience that have been... Uh, staunchly loyal in the main part to what I've done and the changes that I've taken which have been quite, as you know, diverse to say the least. Um, and that uh, there have been a sort of a, a knotty band that have sort of stayed with me through all of that. Um, and so I, 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 I don't think, I've tried never to feel self-satisfied with what I've been doing which has prompted me to keep on moving in different directions. Um, but it certainly was an incredible fulfillment for me to be able to do something so-called legitimate. Um, in fact, undergo that kind of discipline and find that I could withstand it and, and work within somebody else's very strict confines. Are you getting people saying, I enjoyed your performance, but I hadn't even heard of you before? I mean, is this possible? Uh, that element has crept into it, yeah. Uh, there have been some regular theatre goers who've come and said, well, they had heard of heard me, the name, but, didn't but in some part. either perverse fashion or, <laughs> <laughs> or some kind of really corrupted idea of what I was about. Right. And I, I, I suppose they've got a different impression of me now. Little do they know. <laughs> How long will you do the part four on Broadway? Um, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> then I go to bed. How many, how many two uh, hours will you do? About. Um, I think. I don't think I could personally go past uh, Christmas. I know I, I'm tied up till Christmas. So that's quite a run. So I'd it's say. a long run. Yeah. But I mean, for for yeah. somebody who's a as sort of grasshopper by nature as myself, I. It's a long run. And would um, you like to go back to the stage on something else in due course? Not particularly, no. Um, I've learned an awful lot just in the few weeks that I've been doing this. I hope that I can explore the part even further. I, it could happen if I don't, then I'll be sort of wasting a lot of time. I would like to be more adventurous with the part. I've been stri sticking very tightly to the way I first wanted to interpret the thing. Whilst all this palaver has gone on about press and opening nights and whatever, now things are relaxing more. Sure. I w would like to stretch out into it more. And there are certain avenues I would like to follow that I haven't had the courage to do so yet, but now I sort of will probably take advantage. Now, simultaneously, um, you, you happen to have a brand new album just out, which has already been a huge hit in England. Is, is it actually out here in the States? It's yet? just out a week or so, yeah. Just out. Yeah. And um, the title of that is Scary Monsters, and of course, yeah. one might feel there's some link between that title and the fact that you play something that could be described as a scary monster in the play, but is that just coincidence? Synchronicity. 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 I mean, I what does synchronicity quite on, mean? Exa it's exactly what you said. <laughs> it, well, kind of a coincidence that it's. Uh, well, let's go into the Jungian side of it. it no, it's. Um, not. It's something I was working on, as I say, before the thing actually was cemented. It's quite likely that the idea of Elephant Man did stay with me, as a title. But I know, um, just on my memory reference, that it actually came from a Kellogg's cornflakes packet. <laughs> on the back, they were giving away. It said, uh, oh, "Buy your, oh, buy your copy of, no, but copy. You don't get a copy. Well, these days you may well get a portfolio of Kellogg's cornflakes. <laughs> buy your packet of K Kellogg's cornflakes, and inside you will find scary monsters and superheroes. Um, so you presumably found Superman and right. Nosferatu's in your mouth. Uh, and as I was writing a New York album, it seemed the perfect sort of." Yeah. collective title for the bits and pieces I was writing on it. Were you surprised at the enormous... So it was, yes, coincidentally. Yeah. Were you surprised at the uh, huge success of the single in England? Uh, frankly, yes, I was. I, it, do uh, you think your video had a lot to do with it? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I would tend to believe, um, to be uh, honest about it, I suppose that Major Tom was a sort of a... There's a, a comfortable feeling with him, being yeah. such a sort of an old figure of mine. I mean, he goes back to 68, 69, whenever it was. Um, I, I guess that sort of a lot of people still have some kind of empathy with him because he became a little sort of yes. bouncy hero. Um, I just wanted to sort of 
bring him up to date a little bit and so put him in a Victorian nursery rhyme kind of atmosphere, even though it's not Victorian. It's, it has that queasiness of some of those ring a ring a roses, yes. this is about the plague and we're all going to drop down dead or kind of thing about it, um, which is what I did with the piece. Have you directed that video yourself, Yeah. You? Are you hoping to get into that direction in perhaps future films? Um, I think for the, for, the, for the time being, it's quite likely that I would stay working with David Mallet, with whom I work with on that one. Uh, we have a, a good, a very good working relationship. And uh, David allows me um, lots and lots of freedom to do very much what I want, the, I, the ways I want it edited. I storyboard it for him, showing exactly what frames I want done how it mm -hmm. should be done and then he puts his input in as well and uh, especially on ashes to ashes the combination has been very successful it must be fairly expensive i mean that one like that one was ex fairly expensive for me yeah not not from some of the other figures i've heard flying around from yeah. other uh, so-called major artists yes <laughs> uh it was quite a good budget but it's um who are your musical heroes these days musical heroes that's hard uh, I know who I, I, bits and pieces of work that I admire very much. Um, at the moment, I'm impassioned by, um, and it's not too strong a word, I play them all the time, Philip Glass and Steve Reich. I like very much indeed. Um, so Philip Glass has just done an opera on, let me get it right, on, is it on Buddha or Gandhi or something? I, th I, I don't know what his new work, the last piece that I knew. I read a piece about him, I, I have really? to confess. That's I quite lightly, I, that's very rude of me. I was with him the other day and I didn't ask him what he'd been doing. He's probably too busy talking about what I've been doing. Um, <laughs> Are there any of your, as it were, contemporaries, people who got going about the time you did, who you admire? Or? Not really, I think we just remain friends, really. I think that's probably why we're friends, because we don't like each other's music. I think I know really? the people you're referring to. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get on very well with each other's music, so that would never sort of crops up in our conversations, and I think that's probably why we end up knocking around with each other, without any sort of feelings of kind of, you know, the peacocky yes. Yes. kind of thing. In your uh, long and illustrious career, which has spanned now, 10, 12 years at the top. Um, what are you most proud of to date? Um, Keeping going, I should think. Oh, God, I could only give a flip answer to that. That really is... I, uh, that... Do you know, that's really hard. I mean, that's... Ch at the moment, obviously, this week, the fact that I could do and sustain a role of that intensity on, on stage. But, I mean, those kinds of... That kind of pride, I think, is uh, not a good thing to fall back on whilst you're still a working artist. Yeah. I think for me, it's uh, I'm it's despairingly abysmal to ask me what I'm proud of because it's not it doesn't sort of work like that. I could tell you what I haven't liked, what I've done, but far more easily. I think it's a question of reevaluation all the time. The fact that I've never had to buy one of my own records, I suppose. <laughs> RCA have always given me one. One. Yeah. Well, David, thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure meeting you. That's and, uh, my pleasure. I I've, I've bought certainly more than one or two of your records, and I'm sure I shall buy some more. I'm flattered. And good luck with the rest of the Elephant Man's run. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> David Bowie on Broadway. Even as you stare at your screen this very moment, while thinking about exciting nighttime activities to come, such as filling the hot water bottle. David Bowie is about to go on stage at the Booth Theatre in New York. If you happen to be in New York before Christmas, and if having got there, you can get a ticket for The Elephant Man, do go. Thank you, David. Thank you, Alan Clark and the Hollies, Helen Hanf and Christopher Matthew. Next week, who's on? Well, me and Kingsley Amis, B.A. Robertson, talking about why...